Thank you for joining us for today's message. We are always so encouraged to hear how God is using Adventure Church to speak into your life. If you would like to support Adventure Church financially, you can do so online and help us bring messages just like this one to you each and every week. Now let's prepare our hearts to hear a word from God. All right, well, we've been in a series called Winning, and we weren't winning last Sunday because uh, the, the county issued a level three uh, emergency, so I literally could not make you come to church, and so... We canceled. Glad we did. Hopefully you enjoyed a snow day, but we're glad that you're back, and uh, we're kind of picking up part three of this series, uh, and uh, part four, unfortunately, is just going to have to be another message at another time, because next week we're kind of moving into Vision Sunday with our Super Sunday and talking about 2019 and where we really feel like God is taking our church for this year. But I want to just recap quickly, and if you have missed any of these messages, please go online and, and either watch them or listen to them on on uh, the podcast or the app, whatever uh, you choose to use, whatever device you have. Make sure you catch up. These all play together, and I just don't have time to recap the right way. But we've been talking about winning, and, and our world has an idea of what winning is, and, and the scoreboard determines how we win. And in life, in our world, you know, it's, it's money, it's possessions, it's power, it's influence. And if you have those things, you're winning in the eyes of the world. But we said, you know what, you can win in the eyes of the world and lose in the eyes of God. You can win uh, at things that don't matter most. And so we said to really win, we have to know what God's will is, and then we have to do God's will for our life. That success is obedience to God's will for your life. And with Jesus, if you are with him, you can't lose. Come on, somebody. Without him, you can't win, but with him, you can't lose. He said, if you're with me, if you're plugged into me, if you remain in relationship with me, man, I am going to be with you. I am going to give you strength. And even when you may feel like you're losing because I'm working all things together for your good, you are still winning. So we must remain in relationship. And so today we're going to talk about how do we win with the home team at our homes and in our home life. And just so you know, husbands, just take a deep breath. I'm not even talking about marriage today, okay? I'm going to do a whole series on it in February, so then it'll be really good. Uh, So we're going to kind of pause on that, but today we're going to talk about parenting, and I know some of you are like, oh, man, I'm not even a parent. Well, maybe you will be someday. Maybe you have a parent. Maybe you know a parent. Maybe you're in a season of life where you're a grandparent. You can still help coach other parents, and here's the deal. We're going to talk about principles today that you can invest in the next generation, whether you're a parent or not, because some of you know what's happening in the next generation is important for our future. It's important for what God has for us to make sure that the church is winning in the future. So we're going to talk a little bit. And before we do that, I just need to say, I'm not the perfect parent by far. My wife is not the perfect parent. And today I'm not teaching you necessarily from a place of, hey, I've figured this all out. This is what I do at my house. This is from a place that I studied over the last couple weeks and said, hey, this is what Scripture says. This is what experts say can help you win when it comes to parenting, when it comes to winning with your kids. And so I just want to, to, to preface the message with that statement. This isn't necessarily coming from a place of perfection, but also for me, a place of conviction this past a couple weeks as I've been preparing and going, oh man, I'm not good at that. Oh, I definitely don't do that right. I need to do better here. So can we all just agree to, to, to say that we could all do better when it comes to this? And I'm not trying to tell you how to parent your kids. I'm just going to give you some principles from the Word of God that will help you when it comes to parenting your kids. As we've talked about, culture has a scoreboard for our lives and our world says, hey, this is how you win. And can I just say this? It has one for your kids too. And it says, you got to get your kids in this school, and they got to have this kind of education, and that's how your kids will win is through great education. you got to get them in every sport and every event and every dance thing and gymnastics things. you got to get them, and they got to have all this stuff, and they got to have the right academics and get into the right school, and all those things are what's going to ensure that they win. And today I want to say I'm not saying those things aren't important, that those things don't have value, but remember our definition of winning isn't what the world thinks, and when we, the the clock on our lives on the scoreboard runs out for us, no matter what we do, no matter where we, we are, we will stand before God, and when our time is up, we will give an account for how we lived our lives. And in week one we said when we give that account, God's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with what I gave you? And winning for us is when we can hold our our, our heads up high to our Savior and say, God, I did the best I could. I wasn't perfect, but God, I did the best I could with what you gave me. 
with what mattered most. And I'm telling you, if you are a parent and, or involved in children's life, one of the greatest responsibilities we have is, is with our children and the, the generation that's coming after us, that we will give an account. I will give an account and, and, and be accountable to how I raised my kids, to how I stewarded this gift that God gave me and my son and in my daughter, that I will give an account before God for that. And let me just say this, again, our culture, winning, achieving things, doing great things, those are all good things, but maybe for some of us, this is a quote from Andy Stanley, he says, the greatest contribution you might make to this world is, is not something you do, but someone you raise. And I don't know about you, that excites me, to think I have an opportunity to raise up a kid who might do something even greater than I've been able to do with my life. That there might be giftings that God has put inside of them that he didn't even put inside of me. That he might have a plan for them that far exceeds my expectations. And so your greatest win in life might not be you and something you do, but your kid and something they do. And so our goal as parents is to do our best with our children to invest what matters most in them for eternity in their lives, what matters most for them, to raise them in a way that when they stand before God, because someday they will, that they will be winners in his eyes as well, that they will pursue God, that they will do the will of God, that success and winning for them will be defined by their obedience to Christ and his plan for their life. And right now we don't know, uh, you know what God has for them maybe, and depending on the age of their life and where they're at, you may not know what that is, but we just do our best to lead them through love and with encouragement and with discipline. We're gonna talk about that a little bit and the support that we can to give them experiences and to put them in environments where they can figure out what God's plan is for their life, where they're put in an environment where it's valued and it's encouraged and they Pursue God. So winning with our kids, though, it takes intentionality. It will never happen accidentally, and so we have to put effort into that. I don't know about you, but, but one of my greatest fears is like my kid getting separated from me somewhere. And I, I think it's because when I was a kid, I was kind of a wuss, and I was always afraid like I was going to get separated from my parents somewhere. So like, you know, Maddox is kind of that way. Like he's, he's always close. He's always on my hip. I don't have to worry about him. Riley, right? Like you have to, you know, those leashes that they make for kids. I still want it for her right now. She's eight. I just want to be like, get back over here. Not because like she's doing something bad because I'm afraid like, hey, something could happen to you. Someone could take you, right? And there's this fear. And there's been times where, where there's been a moment of separation, and it's just a moment. I've never had a long period of time where I'm, but there's a moment and I immediately like panic. I'm like, where is she? Where are they at, right? And I start asking, have you seen this? Have you seen this? And they're like, oh, she's right there, sir. I'm like, okay, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I knew that, I'm fine. Jess is like, calm down, you know? Because like if something were to happen to them physically, I just don't know what I would do. If something were to, like, I, I just, there's a fear in me. And so I put effort into making sure that they're physically safe, that I wanna protect my kids at all costs from physical harm, but I was challenged this week to think that what if I put that same effort into my kids' spiritual development? That if I put that kind of energy and passion into saying, you know what, I wanna I want develop my child in a way that they know God, that they know he loves them, that they know that he has a plan for their life and that success for them will be pursuing that and, and my job is to help them discover that and lead them to a place of dependence upon God, right? If I put that kind of effort that I did into their physical protection or maybe their sports activities, we will win where it matters most with our kids. Dr. Dustin Binge, I saw this on, a friend of mine shared this. He's a Christian author. I looked him up a little bit, very respected. He said this. He said, there is a 0.0296% chance that your child will become a professional athlete. There is a 0.0086% chance that your child will become a famous celebrity. There is a 100% chance that your child will stand before Jesus. And I know your kid's the exception. I know he's going to make it. Mine is. He just had his doctor's appointment this week. He's in the 90th percentile for height and weight. I said, good job, Bubba. You're going to be a lineman. You should see him run the ball. It's going to be alignment. <laughs> right? We, we think that. And there's nothing wrong to, to do that. But, but the reality is, is that, that we can often invest where it doesn't really matter. We put all of our energy and time into things that when 
When it really comes down to winning in the eyes of God, it won't be significant when it comes to eternity and that there is a 100% chance that every one of our children will stand before God someday and give an account just like you will. And God's going to ask them, what did you do with what I gave you? Did you pursue me? Did you do the will of God for your life? And we have a responsibility as parents to, to lead them to a place, not just where they could become a professional athlete or be the best in their school and education. And again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those things, but we also have a responsibility to lead them to a place where they know God and they pursue God with their life. And so a parent's priority is to gradually transfer a child's dependence away from them until it rests completely on God. We gradually transfer them. We're always talking to them about who God is and the plan he has for their lives. Proverbs 22.6 gives us this promise. It says, train a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not turn from it. There's training. There's development that we have as coaches for our kids, essentially, in this theme of winning, that we're coaching them to win, developing them to be who God's called them to be. And it's easy just to go with the flow of culture. Sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it. It's just the way our world works. It's just the, the neighborhood we live in and the schools our kids go to. All of our kids are involved in stuff and have things going on. And we're getting them from here to there and, 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 and go, trying to get through things. And, and the win in our culture is to make our kids experience rich. But it's usually at the cost of becoming relationally poor. Let me explain that a little bit, right? We want to give our kids the experiences, right? We all want that. I want to give my kids the things that I never had. I want to give my kids experiences. I was talking about this with our kids. My kids are so spoiled. We've, since they were like two, we've gone on vacation every year. Like vacation, I, I remember like three vacations in my whole life with my family. And vacation was going to Cedar Point. And going out to eat was getting some McDonald's. Come on, somebody. Anybody else been raising that child, right? That was like, hey, hey, kids, it's a treat tonight. You get a happy meal. Like, woo, come on, right? My dad would get one milkshake, and we'd all get a little cup. I'd be like, right? My kids have no clue. They've been on, they've been on a vacation every year of their life that they can even remember. They can't even remember some of the vacations they went on. And we can get caught up into this. My kids need the experiences. They, we deserve this. They need to be at Disney. They, they went to Disney. We need to go to Disney. They, they go here. They're in this sports team. They need to be on the, oh, Johnny's got to get on the traveling team. Honey, we got to work with them. He needs he needs one-on-one -on -one training so that he can get on traveling team because his best friend at school is on traveling Right? We get caught up in this. We don't even realize it's happening. We're just trying to give our kids experiences, and we want them to succeed. We want them to do well. We want them to have what we never had, but often comes at the sake of losing relationship with God and with you and with people in their life that really matter most. And so they become experience rich, but relationally poor. And again, it's okay to have relationships, but shouldn't come at the cost, or at experiences, but not at the cost of relationships. And so there's three questions to ask I want to get into briefly today when it comes to your parenting journey to make sure that you're winning with your kids and where it matters most in their relationship with you, with God, and others. The first thing we have to ask ourselves and as we kind of all take an assessment today is what are you doing in your, in your child's life to enhance their relationship with you? What are you doing to enhance their relationship with you? Ephesians 6, chapter 4, the Apostle Paul tells us, parents, fathers, mothers, don't exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. That word exasperate means that, that we abuse our position as their parent, as their authority, to get what we want from our children to a point where they're angered and we, we push them away. We, we, we leverage our our position to get our kids to do what we want them to do. And Paul says, don't, don't do that. Don't exasperate. Don't just leverage your position. Train them, instruct them in the Lord. Because when we leverage our position, we begin to alienate them relationally. And you never want to lose relationship because you will then lose your influence. So we bring them up, and it says to, to bring them up is translated to nurture them. It's not about control. Listen, it's not about controlling your kids. It's about influencing your kids. Because here's the deal. You may control them now. There will be a point you won't be able to control them, and you're still going to want influence. Are you following me today, right? 
So what are you doing to build this relationship with you? Because the quality of your relationship with your kids will determine the weight of your influence in their life. You see, when we think about our kids, and for many of us, it's just the age of our church, and if you question me, just go come back at 10 and go into KidVenture, okay? We have a lot of kids. That's why we're focusing just a message here on children because it's such a large demographic of our church. I realize it's not everyone. There's such a large demographic of people who are raising their kids, and, and when my kids are little, even now, even though they're getting bigger, I can still go like this. I want you to do this, and they may resist, and I go, boom, boom. Sit, right? That's what I do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm using my size and my position. I can pick you up and put you where I want to be. But eventually, that goes away, doesn't it? And so we have to shift from influencing from position or power to influencing from relationship. And it's important that you establish relationship now. That, again, bring them up in the training. It means to nourish, to be a, a nurturer, to, be, to speak into, to be a guide and a coach in their life where we, we nurture our relationship with them. And your influence must come through relational channels when they get older, not authority and power. So you must establish relationship now so you can maintain influence later. You invest now relationally for influence later. It's small, compounding investments over time. Building up essential relational equity with your kids that you'll spend at a later date. Now some of you are seeing they go, yeah, 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 relationship. Listen, I'm not called to be my kid's friend. I'm called to be their parent. And I would say, amen. Yes, you are. Through relationship. What about discipline? Some of you are like, what about discipline? Right? Where's that other verse at? Right? Spare the rod, spoil the child. Let's talk about it a little bit, right? What about discipline? How should we discipline? And again, I'm not haven't perfected this, but discipline is correction driven by love. It's correction driven by love, never done in anger. Listen to what Hebrews says, chapter 12, verses 5 through 6, and it says, Have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as your as his children? were his children. He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you for the Lord disciplines those who what? He loves. We discipline from love. He punishes each one and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. That God disciplines us because he loves us. That God is our heavenly father. He disciplines us because he loves us and he wants what's best for our life. But he does so with so much grace and patience, doesn't he? That's how he disciplines us, through mercy and love. Think about this. God sided with us against our sin, right? It was our sin that nailed Jesus to the cross. He sided with us against our sin, and we need to side with our kids even when they're disobedient. You side with them, and you go, I'm not mad at you, but I'm upset and I'm grieved with you because I believe God has so much more for you. That God has a desire for you to be something great and I'm disciplining you and I'm correcting you because I love you just like God loves you. So we discipline when they're disobedient, when they're dishonest, and when they're disrespectful. To me, this is an easy way to follow. Like, well, how do I know when to discipline, right? You don't want to be disciplining every time, right? They tattle, like, we're learning this. Like, Riley will come and tattle on Maddox and I'll say, go handle it yourself. I'm not disciplined. Go talk, go figure it out. I don't, I'm not involving myself. That's not, you know, this isn't disrespect, you know. So, but if when they're disobedient, dishonest, or disrespectful, we need to discipline, and then we discipline with instruction and reconciliation. We talk to them about what happened. We approach discipline with our kids with a mindset of re- reestablishing and essentially restoring a broken relationship with them. Because when they discipline against their, their when they di- are disobedient as their parents, they're essentially breaking relationship, and we want to reestablish relationship immediately. And we discipline with that in mind the way God disciplines us. There was few weeks back, the kids were, Justin just had one of those days with the kids, right? And I got home, and I could just tell it'd been one of those days with the kids. And you could tell that she'd begun frustrated and, 
And it, it takes a lot for my wife to become frustrated once. So I knew, like, oh, man, it's been a, it's been a long day with these guys. What's going on? And so I could tell that, that Maddox was being in, not intentionally disrespectful, but he just wasn't being grateful. Anybody ever been there, right? Just not grateful, never saying thank you, never like complaining about what he had for lunch, complaining about what was made for dinner, doesn't want to eat, you know, wine, 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 wine. And so I could tell Jess was upset, and I pulled Maddox aside, and I said, you know what you need to do, bud? You need to just go to mom, tell mom. Jess was frustrated with them. She wasn't having them at the moment, right? It was kind of like, keep them away from me. And I said, why don't you just go up to mom and say thank you? For what? Just say thank you. Okay. He walks up. Hey, Mom. What? <laughs> I just want to say thank you. And immediately, you know what Jess did? Like melted. She's like, it's okay, buddy. Yeah. It's, right? Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. Right? And immediately, like they're cuddling on the couch. Right? Because the goal was, right, I could have been like, you need to respect your mother. You need to do this. Go to your room. Learn this. Do this. Right? And it was like, no, no. Just go tell mom thank you, because what I wanted was that relationship to be restored, for them to get back in relationship, because relationship is what's most important. So we discipline in a way that restores broken relationship, because restriction doesn't work. Relationship works. When you lead and discipline from relationship, restriction doesn't work, because it didn't work for you, did it? Right? No one ever says, like, let me tell you when it all changed for me. My dad took my Game Boy, and I was like, I get it, man. I get it, I'll do, uh, yes, I'm gonna be it, right? It doesn't work. Restrictions, like, like, I'm saying, look, you can, there's times where we take things away from our kids, and, but, but eventually it doesn't work. And the goal is relationship. There's four stages of parenting that I wanna give you to help you kinda realize how we can do this a little bit better. The first is the first one, years one through five is the discipline years. And we do this now because it gets harder later. We've already talked about that. Proverbs 19 says, discipline your children while there is hope. Otherwise, you will ruin their lives. You do it early, right? You discipline with instruction and teaching. Then you move on to the training years, 5 through 12. You're, you're training them. You're coaching them. You're teaching them what it means. And the coaching years come from 12 to 18. This is where they're discovering their path and what God has for them. You're coaching and, and doing that. You're, you shouldn't be taking your child to their room and pulling your belt off when they're 12, right? That should have happened earlier. And then the friendship years come when they're 18 plus, right? I always say this. I want to raise our kids in a way that when they leave, they'll want to come back. They'll want to come home. They'll want to spend time with mom and dad. They'll say, mom and dad are my friends. Mom and dad love me. Mom and dad still have influence in my life, and that's what I want because we want our influence to carry throughout their entire life. Discipline's important. Have to ask yourself, what are you doing right now to enhance your relationship with your kids? What are you sowing into them relationally so that you will have influence later? Then you have to ask, what are you doing to advance your child's relationship with God? Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, you guys know this verse for yourself. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. This is the message that we should be right now trying to instill into our kids' life. Trust in God. He has a plan for your life. Pursue that plan. Allow him to lead you, and you'll be fulfilled. You'll be happy. You'll be winning. So we're getting this daily reinforcing this into our kids' life. God loves you. He has a plan for you. You obey me, and you, you do well. You respect your teachers. You do these things because you want to be, you are going to be accountable to God. You are accountable to God for how you Live your life, so surrender them, right? Listen, a relationship with God isn't an important thing in their life. It's the most important thing. It's the most important thing, and we established that for ourselves last time we met together in week two of this series, and I'm just telling you, no one can influence their relationship with God, your child's relationship with God, more than you. Nobody. Can I just say this? It's not the church's job. We do our best to partner with you, but guess what? We get about 20 minutes of instruction time with them. That's it. Now, we'll partner with you. We'll help you. We'll try to give you tools. And our staff is great, and they work really hard, and we do our best to create and experience them, but it's your responsibility to invest in their relationship with God. 
to make sure that they know God. And you speak God's truth in their life. You tell them that he has great things planned for you. You're a leader, not a follower. I tell my kids that all the time. You're a leader and not a follower. God has a plan for your life. You're a leader and not a follower. And what's awesome is, is when the kids turn to pray at night, they'll occasionally slip that into their prayers. God, help me to be a leader and not a follower. Right? We're enforcing, we're speaking truth and encouragement into them. Think about when, when Jesus was, was being baptized and even Jesus needed this encouragement from his father. In Matthew 3, it says, a voice from heaven came down and said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen, you need to decide what your kids need to hear. It may be different than what my kids need to hear. And you need to say it more times than you think they need to hear it. Decide what they need to hear and repeat it. Make that a broken record in their life. Decide how many times they keep speaking that into their life. You are responsible to help advance your child's relationship with God. And then lastly, what are you doing to influence your child's relationship with people outside of the home? These are the three questions we should be asking. What am I doing right now to enhance my relationship with my kids so that I have, I'm investing now for influence later? I'm ad- helping advance their relationship with God. I'm, I'm representing God. I'm speaking his truth and encouragement. I'm putting them in environments and giving them experiences where they will know God. And then what are you doing to influence your child's relationship with people outside of the home? Proverbs 13, 12 says, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harms. We tell our students here all the time. We tell our kids, your friends will determine the direction and the quality of your life. Your friends will determine the direction and the quality of your life. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. That's what we tell our kids. And so you have to give your kids experiences. Give them experiences, but don't do so at the cost of relationships. Don't make the mistake to think that the key to their success as an adult is getting experiences now. Listen, the key to their success as an adult, what makes life fulfilling when you grow up is relationships, not experiences. It's the people that you have in your life. It's the people that, that, that were a part of your journey that make life fulfilling. So you have to think, who are the people that I need to influence towards my kids and my kids towards them? Hang out with this person. That's a wise person. Walk with the wise. Every week, your kids have an opportunity here on Sundays to plug in, to hopefully connect with other believers, to at least to other parents who value the same things you do, saying, hey, we need to be in church to get their kids here, to get your kids, if they're in middle school or high school, to get them here on Wednesday night so that they're, they're getting influenced not just by people in, the, in our world and in culture, but by the things of God, by leaders, by adults who are investing into their life. There was a parent in our church, and she made a decision, and she, she put this post up on her Facebook, and so I figured it was public. I won't mention, won't mention her name, but hey, you put it on Facebook, I'm gonna use it. So, She said this, if your child isn't attending Collide, that's our Wednesday night, middle school, high school, do everything you can to get them there. I dropped the ball the first half of the school year in the fall and didn't make sure my sixth grade daughter was there. This January, I decided to be intentional about getting her there. She was so nervous because she didn't know anyone, was somewhat fighting me with going. She took a friend from school to help her and to comfort level, and when I picked them up, they were so excited and enthusiastic and they couldn't stop talking about how much they loved it. They were talking a mile a minute about, to me about everything that happened there. My daughter's words when we got out of the car at home were it just hit my heart with thankfulness for Adventure Church and, and this student ministry. She said with pure joy, my favorite part was the last hour with all the girls. They were so nice, Mom, and they seemed to be so close to Jesus. I want to go back every week. And then she said thank you to the, the staff and the leaders who were investing in their kids. Can I just tell you something really honest right now? You control your kid's schedule. You do. You're the parent. And so what are you doing to get your kids in environments where they're being influenced to to win in the right way? And you can put them in environments. And we have to choose to cheat somewhere. You can't have your kid in everything. You gotta decide what's most important for my kid. And I'm not telling you what that is. But to say, you know what, I'm gonna make sure that they have people in their life who are gonna influence them to pursue the will of God. 
You control your kid's calendar. We can't put God on a shelf and let them do every other activity under the sun. We got to make it a priority. You have to make it a priority. And what you make a priority, they will make a priority. Statistics say that over 70% of kids, listen to this, will stay plugged into a local church as adults if their parents did when they were kids. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. The band's coming. We're going to close out. And again, I'm not saying I do this perfectly. Please. I drop the ball many times in a lot of these areas. But I do know this. Kids won't do what you say. They will do what you do. And I meet families all the time. Our church is growing. We're meeting families. And occasionally, probably 25% of the time, a lot of the times parents will go, you know, we really wanted our kids to be raised with these values. We, we got to a point where we knew we wanted our kids to be here. Our kids need this. Come on, anybody understand, right? My kids need to be here. My kids get that, right? You're understanding. They need to have some of this influence. But listen to me. And I, I, I get that. I agree with that. But here's the thing. You can't want this. You can't want God You can't want his purpose for them without not wanting it for yourself. Because you can't lead somebody where you're not willing to go. You can't lead somebody to a place that that you're not willing to go yourself. And and eventually, right now, you can can lead with position and power. You go to church, you're going to be here. You show up, you're going to be here. Right? But eventually, you lose that. Eventually, they become a teenager, and you'll say, go do that. And they'll say, no, I don't want to. Then what do you do when you can't pick them up anymore? Will you have the relational equity? Will you have the influence? So all these things are so important. But you can't lead your kids where you aren't willing to go yourself. You can't say, kids, you need to pursue God, and you don't pursue God. Hey, kids, God needs to be a priority in your relationship, but you don't make him a priority in your relationship. Hey, kids, God needs to be first, but he's not first for you. So the most important thing, and we said this last week, the most important thing you can do for your marriage, for your family, to win where it matters most is to win in your own relationship with Jesus, to put him first. So we ask all these questions. What are we doing to enhance our relationship with our kids, to advance their relationship with God, and to influence their relationships with others outside of the home? But today you have to ask yourself, where are you with God? Where are you with him personally? What relationships do you have outside of your home that are influencing you to keep pursuing God, to keep God first? We're launching life groups last week and our winter session's starting. Are you committed to say, I, yeah, you're, I agree, Kyle, I need to get my kids here on Sunday. I need to get them here on Wednesday nights. I get that. That's going to be so important. What about you? Who are you getting face-to-face with and allowing accountability into your life? Who's encouraging you and challenging you to keep pursuing God in this world that doesn't value him? Are you living for what matters most? Because eventually your kids will do as you do, not as you say.